Um, okay, so brothers and sisters, we all know that La ilaha illallah, rather Tawheed al-Uluhiyya. Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, which is the Tawheed of worshipping Allah alone, i.e. what we do for Allah. Tawheed al-Rububiyya, what we just spent the last month and a half, two months doing, is what Allah does for us. Tawheed al-Rububiyya. Allah protects us. Allah cultivates us. Allah created us. Allah provides for us. Allah controls our affairs. That's what Allah does for us. Tawheed al-Uluhiyya is what we do in return for Allah, which is worship. Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, or you can call it Tawheed al-Ibadah. Tawheed al-Ibadah. Brothers and sisters, in this video, inshallah, we're going to learn why it's so important. Why this is the main one. Why this is the one that we need to focus on. Why this is the one that the prophets came down for. The first ayah that we'll give you is an ayah from Surah Al-Dariyat. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to us the purpose for why He created us. And many of you are familiar with this ayah, but inshallah, we're going to ponder over it for a bit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنْسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I did not create man and jinn except that they should worship me. Now, I want us to look and focus and ponder over the structure of the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say, I created man and jinn so they should worship me. Allah said it the other way around. He didn't say, I created them so that they worship me. Rather, he said, I did not create them except that they should worship me. Why? What's the difference? If Allah said it the, the other way, I created them so they should worship me, that, means, that doesn't mean that there can't be other purposes. I created them so that they should worship me and they, so that they should you know, live and procreate and have fun and get married and be rich and get jobs and go to university, there could be other purposes added on to it. There could be other reasons. There could be other reasons as to why Allah created us. But when Allah says, I did not create them for any reason, except that they should worship me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making our creation, He's making our existence exclusive for one thing and one thing only. And that is worship. Brothers and sisters, me and you were created to worship Allah alone. And that's it. We were not created to go to university. We were not created to get married. We were not created to have children. We were not created for any one thing, brothers and sisters, except that we enslave ourselves to Allah and worship Him as the only one deity who deserves to be worshipped. Alone. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to ask you a very real question. I want you to reflect inside yourself. That's the reason why you're created. How much worship do you do? Look at your day. Look at your day. You wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you go to the loo, you go to work, da da da. In between, you pray your salah, maybe you read a bit of Quran. But what is the majority of your day about? Is the majority of your day about worship? Allah is quite sad, isn't it? The majority of our days are about anything other than worship. Sure, we pray our five times a day. We do. And maybe we do a bit of dhikr and we read a bit of Quran. Ramadan comes, sure, we fast. Once a year, we give zakat, charity. But brothers and sisters, we were created for worship. And our worship doesn't even amount to 5, 2, 3% of our lives. 2, 3% of our existence isn't even worship. What does that say about us? We need to do a lot more, right? Now, what about the one who doesn't even worship? What about the one who does not worship? You know what the very minimum that you and I need to do? is the five-time daily prayer. Not four, not three, five, without missing a single one, ever in your life. Brothers and sisters, the one who is not even praying five times a day, this person is not even fulfilling their purpose. This person is like a dead pet. Many of you have, ha have pets, so you'll be able to relate. Imagine you have a pet cat or a pet fish. 
and your pet cat it dies, are you going to still keep that pet cat in the house? Are you going to still go and pet it? Rub and stroke the cat, it's dead. Are you going to give it food? You're going to provide for it? Are you going to keep it in the house? No, you get rid of the cat straight away. You dash away with it as soon as it dies. Why? Because it's not fulfilling its purpose anymore. Me and you on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's earth, this creation of Allah that He created for us, this is, our purpose here is just to worship. For those of us who do not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are like dead pets. We're like dead dogs on this earth. How long do you think Allah is going to keep you around before He dashes away with you as well? Or before He dashes away with me? Or us? If we don't fulfill our purpose. Brothers and sisters, this is why La ilaha illallah is so important. How is it that you and I have not taken out the time up until now to study this? When well, this was the reason we were made. Surah to Yunus, ayah number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth, this entire universe was created for worship. Did you know that even the universe worships Allah? Did you know that there's not a single thing except that it does tasbih, glorification of Allah? Except that we don't understand the way that it does it, but it does it. How is it that the ants are doing more tasbih than me and you? And the ants weren't gifted with what Allah gifted us. How is it that the grass worships Allah more than me and you? This is why la ilaha illallah is important. Brothers and sisters, Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiyallahu an was sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked him, he said, Ya Mu'ad. He said, do you know the rights? Do you know what the rights are that Allah has over you? You creation, you are all slaves. We are all slaves, right? Worshippers of Allah. What is the right that Allah has that me and you need to fulfill? Mu'ad said, Ya Rasulullah, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and His Messenger know. I don't know. Educate us. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The right that Allah has over us is that we worship Him alone and we don't associate any partners in worship with Allah. Not no human, not no grave, not no girlfriend, not no boyfriend. For those of us who choose going out with your girl or spending time with your friends over worship, you made, you've given that person a status higher than Allah and Allah is our Lord. So you've enslaved yourself to that person and made that person your God. For those of you who choose to obey your teachers, your employers, your employee, employers over Allah, like you won't go Juma because of Salah, you won't go to Juma Salah because of work, you made that person into your master, into your God. Allah said, the Prophet said, it is Allah's right that he is worshipped alone and you don't make no partners with him. That's the right Allah has over me and you. Some time went past. The Prophet called Mu'adh again and he said, Ya Mu'adh, he said, do you know the right that you have as the creation of Allah? that Allah has to fulfill for you? Brothers and sisters, right now the Messenger has just taught us previously that Allah has a right. And we have to fulfill that right. But now we're being told that we have a right. We have rights that Allah is going to fulfill for us. I want to ask you a question before I carry on with the hadith. <laughs> Who gave us this right? Who can, who, is there anyone that can enforce Allah and place rights on Allah? Anyone from the creation? No. This is a right that Allah gave to us. We don't have no rights. We don't deserve them. We're pathetic little creation. That's the king of kings. Yeah, Allah is saying, I've given my creation some rights. And Allah made it binding on himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah made it upon himself that he was going to fulfill this right. There's no one that's going to question Allah if he doesn't fulfill it. 
There's no one that's going to hold Allah to account because Allah is the King of Kings. And He's overcome by none. Rather, He overcomes all. Yet Allah placed this right upon Himself. It just shows you that love and the mercy that Allah has for His creation. So coming back, Mu'ad ibn Jabir radiallahu anhu, he responds the same way. He says, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and His Messenger know. I, I, I don't know you, Rasulullah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, the right that you all have over Allah is that if you worship Allah alone and you don't associate partners with Him, i.e. if you fulfill Allah's right, if you fulfill Allah's right, your right is that if you fulfill Allah's right, Allah will save you from the punishment of the hellfire. Brothers and sisters, the reason why people end up in the hellfire is because they didn't fulfill Allah's right. The reason why people go to Jannah is because they fulfill the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Paradise and hellfire, whether you go to each one depending on which one, it's all based on La ilaha illallah. Your afterlife is based on La ilaha illallah. Where you will end up. Not only is it the reason you were created in this world, but it's the reason your houses, your final abode was created in the next life. La ilaha illallah, for the ones who fulfill that right, Jannah was created. For the ones who don't fulfill that right of Allah, the hellfire was created. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in Surah Al-Nisa, ayah number 173. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, as for the people who believed, as for the ones who believed and did righteous actions, Allah says, I will give them their reward in full and increase them in more reward from my virtue. But then Allah says, وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ اسْتَنْكَفُوا وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا فَيُعَذِّبُهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا But as for those who, out of their arrogance, they turned up their nose and they rejected the worship of Allah alone. Not enough to just worship Allah, but worship Him alone, with no partners. For these people, Allah says, فَيُعَذِّبُهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا A punishment that will be painful, Allah says. So much so, وَلَا تَجِدُونَ لَهُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا Besides Allah, they will have no ally, no helper, no one to help them. The only one that could have helped them from that punishment was Allah. But they turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now they will scream and they will cry and no one will help them. No one can help them except Allah. But Allah is not their ally. Allah is not their helper that day. Allah is the ally and the helper of the, of the people who have devoted themselves to la ilaha illallah. Brothers and sisters, finally, Islam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Qur'an, the Sunnah, all came for La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. There is no one worthy to be worshipped in truth except Allah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Al-Nahl, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا Allah said that every single prophet he ever sent to any nation, any, any time Allah brought out a prophet, Allah said it was for one thing. Worship Allah alone. Worship Him alone. La ilaha illallah. And turn away and reject every single false god. The Quran we have for la ilaha illallah. The Prophet ﷺ came for la ilaha illallah. His sunnah is la ilaha illallah. Jannah is made for la ilaha illallah. Jahannam is made for la ilaha illallah. This earth and everything in it was created to worship la ilaha illallah. You and I were created for la ilaha illallah. Brothers and sisters, there is not a single thing. Everything, every, everything Allah created for la ilaha illallah. How is it that la ilaha illallah is the, is the biggest thing in the world? It's the most important thing in the world and we don't know nothing about it. And we don't take the time out to learn about it. So brothers and sisters, this is an introduction into the program, this unit inshallah ta'ala. 
we're going to go in and study La ilaha illallah properly inshallah ta'ala and I sincerely pray that Allah gives us tawfiq and I encourage you all please those of you who are already on the program to take it very serious to please take it very serious from now on this is obligatory for you to know but also my beloved brothers and sisters I ask you to encourage other brothers and sisters who have not yet registered for the program to also register for the program because you can see how important it is and if anyone who hasn't registered on the program is watching and listening to me right now, then please, you know, do go to muslimsurvivalguide.com um, and register ASAP. You should be able to find the link below. If not, muslimsurvivalguide.com. Um, and we're going to carry on next week, inshallah ta'ala. And we're going to dive right into studying La ilaha illallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.